Hello everyone, today I'm going to very quickly talk about Darwin Project, a new Battle Royale-esque, I'd say esque game that's just recently launched on Steam Early Access. So uh, just in case you're not on trend with what's going on in the industry right now, uh, Battle Royale games are pretty much the be all and end all. You've got Fortnite and you've got PUBG, the two biggest hitters in the industry, uh, millions of players all from all over the world and just everyone is all about these games at the minute. PUBG is seen as the originator even though it wasn't really the first battle royale game on the market but it was the first one to really hit the mainstream and become like the pedestal for people to try and climb which Fortnite has tried to do and is looking like it's going to do. Uh, Epic have done a good job of keeping people interested and it looks like it might overtake PUBG sometime soon if not already. So when we get any new big buzzy trend in the industry we typically tend to have a few other competitors uh, but they always do things with a twist and Darwin Project is one of those new competitors. It's it's interesting. So Darwin Project has the framework of any good battle royale game which is that it's every man for themselves and whoever wins is the one that's left alive at the end. You dropped into the wilderness of I think Alaska, I'm not too sure, it's early access so they haven't really specified a lot about the ins and outs of the world itself. But you're basically dropped into the wilderness, a uh, snowy wilderness and you are tasked with making the other players dead. But Darwin Project is more of a kind of primal battle royale game. You don't get any high powered rifles or rocket launchers or grenades or any of that good stuff. It's just you, your bow and arrow and snowballs. Oh and a, and a massive shovel or an axe. So you'll get dropped in one of, I think it's about seven zones. So seven zones you parade around in and try to fight the enemies and collect resources. So there is some survival mechanics, but just like some, like um, Kingdom Come Deliverance, it's just an interesting little twist and a little addition that isn't really that invasive. So it's, it is there, but it, you don't have to basically be looking after yourself 24-7 for the entire game like Metal Gear Survive and how goddamn oppressive that was. It's only coal that you have to contend with, so you can do that quite easily by setting up a fire. Um, so you can forage for wood, which is plentiful because weirdly enough it's in the wilderness. You can use this wood to create more arrows for your bow, or you can also find leather chairs to create better equipment, so you can get boots that are quicker and make you less likely to get hunted easier. Um, so it's really, there's a playstyle for everyone. I've played about six hours of it so far, and I've not won. But that could be something to do with me being a console game for about 20 years and just trying to get adjusted to a mouse and keyboard, and that's what I'm gonna blame. Yeah, definitely that. So with all the resources you find, you can also create traps. So you can create bear traps, trip wires, and you can also rig a crate. So it looks like a crate that an uh, enemy will come and open, but when they open it, the day is ruined. It strikes this really nice balance between resource management, trying to get the best resources you can, and proactively going after players and trying to kill them. Uh, it's not a massive map you have to play around in. It all looks a little uniform. There's not that much exciting in the way of aesthetics. It's quite nice. It's going to be quite easy to say, oh, it's Pixel meets Overwatch, that kind of thing. You know, those flat textures with some very cartoonish eyes, but it works well. It's a nice looking game. It runs well on my PC as well. It easily hits 60 frames per second most times. Um, it's not astoundingly good looking, but it definitely does the job. I think compared to PUBG and Fortnite, I think it hasn't quite got the art style that is as attractive as Fortnite, but it fidelity wise looks just as good and PUBG I think personally doesn't look that amazing, but I've never really been one for visuals. Of course no new spin on a popular subgenre is anything without its own unique gimmick and Darwin Project has one of the most interesting ones I think I've seen in a long time. It's very influenced by esports and you kind of have to feel like it was bred specifically for streamers. Every match you have one player who plays as the show director and the director's job is to essentially oversee all the action and sort of influence the flow and rhythm of matches. The best show director is one that doesn't interact or influence too heavily the outcome of the matches so you, you can sort of interject yourself into uh, fights by giving buffs in the way of health to a certain fighter or a speed boost. But if you want to kind of get the best rating and end up having more matches and more abilities going forward, you want to just influence the arena itself. 
you can follow the action player to player or you can have an overview of the match but most people tend to stick to one player and then flip between them and kind of chat to them it depends from game to game I tend to say quick hellos to everyone who's playing I don't want to interfere or be annoying or distract them so I just tend to say hello and then go about my business quietly uh, and it's fun well, it is for a little while, unless you're a very boisterous kind of shout casty kind of player, um, you will be spending most of the matches just waiting for your action points to fill up, so you can actually inter interact with the match itself by closing zones like I said, or even introducing nukes. It is an interesting concept, that's to be sure, but unless you're really, really boisterous and want to kind of shout cast the matches, and, and unless you're a streamer who's also playing as a director, I don't know, unless you have some you know, sociopathic tendencies, I don't think you'll get a lot out of being playing as the director for too long. I played a few matches, about five or six as him, and I just ended up getting a little bit jaded by it, so I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure of the lasting appeal of playing as the show director. But the show director is kind of pivotal to how entertaining or fun a match is to play, or to watch, because a large part of this, as I've said, is trying to directly connect it to streamers and make it a big kind of not necessarily a push for esports because there is realistically there's too much of a, a chasm between skill and resources uh, so PUBG and Fortnite and I hate to keep going on about them but PUBG and Fortnite you do have a lot based on luck and that's why I kind of think they'll never really have a proper stake for a claim for being a true esport uh, and I don't know if Darwin Project is trying to be that or more of like a social game, but I'm not too sure if it could kind of go down that route. But that's kind of the thing about early access. You can get your game out there, get some feedback, and use the money from early access to build upon your ideas and hopefully get it to closer to where the community wants it to be, which the game has a very devoted and pretty friendly community. I have joined quite a few different servers across the world and everyone seems to be pretty chatty. Uh, pretty happy and interested in the game and very addicted to the game. I will say that I started playing it about 10 o'clock last night and was playing it until about half two and kind of had to be dragged away from it. But I just I just wonder what the lasting appeal of it will be. I didn't quite have that same hook this morning when I went to play it again. I didn't really feel completely compelled to keep playing it for hours and hours. Uh, I did. I have enjoyed a lot of my six hours with it. Though I have to say, I can kind of see where the repetition will bore some people and the lack of content for the time being. But it is $15 for essentially what is a more or less complete build of the gameplay experience, but lacking all the extra content and bits and bobs and bells and whistles as it were. If you're, if you're British, you probably know what I mean. There's just the one map for now. And of course they would hopefully build upon that in the future. Uh, I don't know if they'd introduce different climates because it's such a large part of the of the gameplay experience to not really always know where the opposition is and to be able to hide in snow or, and to have to deal with the cold. So maybe they'd introduce a, a hot map, maybe somewhere in a volcano. I mean, that's a cool idea. If you're, if you're listening, Scavenger, you can have that one. That's on me, that one. I'm going to keep playing the Owen Project, though, and see more of what I think of the future, but that is kind of where its success will lay in the future. I'm not sure if it will be as big as PUBG or Fortnite, or, any, or even H1Z1, for instance, but I think they've got a good studio. Scavenger Studio is a very uh, fan-centric studio who cares a lot about what their players say, so it should go the distance in some ways. It will, I can't see it not having an, an audience throughout its like lifetime. If you've been blown up by a rocket launcher one too many times, or have seen too many sniper bullets go directly into your head, Darwin Project could be a neat alternative. It's got a very good future ahead of it. It's just a case of waiting and seeing. But as for if you should play it now, I'd say give it a try. I'd give this a play because there's a lot of fun to be had here, but really it depends on how it goes in the future. Have you played the Orion Project? Have you heard a lot about it? Do you think it can get to the upper echelon of gaming or do you think it will be kind of like a cult hit? Let me know down in the comments below and thanks for watching.